Thank you for joining. I'm Evan Powell, CEO of Nixenta Systems. And at Nixenta, we always say it takes a community uh, for open storage to, to really happen. So I'm extremely happy to be here uh, with Colin from Solution Oriented, uh, one of our valued uh, VMware Oriented uh, partners. So Colin, uh, take it away. I think Colin's going to talk about uh, unified storage and how Nixenta Store helps address the complexity of today's uh, enterprise and data center environments. That's right, and you know, we've, we've talked about um, uh, the VMware use case and how um, uh, block level and file level storage uh, can be uh, utilized in order to uh, meet a, a customer's um, high availability and uh, business continuity disaster recovery uh, concerns. Um, but and we touched on the uh, somewhat alphabet soup of protocols associated with the evolution of uh, virtualization and uh, shared storage. Um, fiber channel, iSCSI, Ethernet, uh, gigabit, 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, and uh, you know the common practice in the uh, in the early years, of course, was uh, to have the storage silos, um, where you'd have uh, if you had need for um, file system storage, SIFs for Microsoft or NFS for Unix or um, or VMware, um, you know, that introduced a file into your network, and uh, maybe that was gigabit Ethernet, and um, then maybe you need block level storage, and that introduced yet another silo storage, the fiber channel SAN, with uh, a brand new networking protocol with new HBAs and new uh, zoning and um, network uh, administrative overhead, uh, but that answered some block level requirements for shared storage. And then the IP SAN came on the scene in order to um, uh, generate a lower cost way to get block level storage over a network by removing the, uh, the, rel the reliance on fiber channel in order to deliver block level standard, um, storage um, uh, more uh, cost effectively, uh, removing the dependency of fiber channel drives, and we can use something a little more down to earth like SAS and SCSI and SATA. Um, so uh, then Nexena Store comes on the scene with uh, ZFS and uh, you know awesome file integrity, easy um, disaster recovery methodology with continuous data protection and um, uh, easy, easy replication and integration with uh, uh, VMware and with the uh, VM data center product. Um, How is that solving this uh, this alphabet soup? Well, one of the nice things about Nexenta stores, as you know, the, the business model. Uh, and the hardware independence promotes freedom, um, but, but also the technology itself. So, um, as we were discussing earlier, if you drop in through Nexenta Store Unified Storage in here, then you, uh, as the IT team, the storage administrator, or the application administrator, for that matter, can now have probably an HA pair of uh, Nexenta Store instances running there and abstracting away the underlying disk technologies from the protocols that are out the front. So, so the benefits are, of course, with Nexenta Store significant savings, but perhaps more importantly, flexibility. Right. So if you're an application user and you, you're, you want to stand up more VMware via uh, NFS, you can do that much more easily now when you have a flexible uh, infrastructure. And if I want to integrate with um, uh, my Windows world, Nexenta Store uh, offers me the, the SIFs and the uh, component um, as well to um, not only take advantage of obviously the, the data integrity and the uh, deep amount of file storage, but um, replication and uh, continuous data protection um, offerings from Nexenta Store. Absolutely. And so you should not be uh, bound by what disk you have when deciding how you want to access that storage and vice versa. And in fact, the same storage, it being a network attached storage solution, can be accessed in multiple ways, as, as you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have Windows users you want to look at a file, that's fine. Uh, the same files can be accessed via NFS, as an example. Uh, adds uh, quite a bit of flexibility. Now, one thing we want to do, uh, probably highlight, is Comstar. And Comstar is that element uh, that Nexena is using to um, 
bring uh, fiber channel capabilities into the uh, IP and block level storage realm. Absolutely. So you now have the ability to actually manage your storage, including your block level, uh, without losing uh, uh, the granularity of control. So, so to highlight this a little bit, if you had an extension store set up, you could set up a so-called hybrid pool, which conceivably could include storage from all of these, right? Right. And that's great. Uh, 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 I'm just going to write the word pool, <laughs> a big pool. And, and it could be legacy storage, as you know, combined with inexpensive two terabyte or four terabyte drives in the future and share it out however you want, and, and that's super. But we had some customers saying, uh -huh, that's good, but I want to get right down to the LUN, and I want to know this computer right here can actually map through to this particular LUN. And I want to set up policies uh, so I don't have to do that complex mapping every time. Uh, and that's kind of what Comstar gives you, and also a, a, a bit of a template or a policy associated with it. So you could literally provision standard type of LUN and have it associated with a couple of clicks with particular clients on the front end. Across fiber channel, but across iSCSI, uh, and future block level uh, protocols as well. And again, the drive doesn't have to be, I picked fiber channel here, it could be SATA, it could be a combination of all of them, uh, uh, that does not determine how the storage comes out the front. Right. So we're talking about abstracted lines as opposed to tied directly to a, a logical unit within the storage pool. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Although you could do that as well. And that Comstar again gives you that. The, the, the challenge is abstract it, but don't go blind. Right. So uh, you've got to be able to see what you're doing or for at least advanced users who want to get to that level have to to be able to get to that level. So that's part of what Comstar, uh, rest, Comstar wrestles with is being able to give you that control while giving you uh, those policies or templates at a higher level. And at the code level, which we're not going to get into code description here, but it is a true unified target so that when we add iSCSI, we've had a long time fiber channel, we had FCOE when it's coming, we're used on in InfiniBand environments as well, which isn't up here, doesn't matter. Uh, each of those, each of those um, protocols is essentially uh, another driver, if you will. It's another module for Comstar. So it's a very, very pl a flexible infrastructure for, uh, for our future and, and, and for our users as well. And each of these inherit the um, attributes of uh, ZFS, this ability to pool, uh, protect data integrity um, at different, different grade levels. Um, and the unique um, caching architecture that uh, ZFS brings to the table to in terms of performance. Exactly. Uh, and this is again our, our legacy. If it, if it takes a team, I mean, it takes a, it takes a community to kind of build an open storage movement, it also takes the, the right team. And so um, we have some of the early leaders in integrating Comstar and ZFS together uh, working uh, with Nixenta. And so we were the first to have a commercial offering on, uh, available that, that did tie ZFS and Comstar together at the most basic uh, level. So in a nutshell, Nixenta Store really ties all this storage together, giving you the freedom to choose between uh, your storage protocols, whether it's network-based or block-based, iSCSI, fiber channel, SIFS, NFS, or whatever they think of next, and Comstores, tying all that together. Absolutely. Right. You've got it. Great. I'm Colin McMillan with Solution Oriented. I'm Evan Powell from uh, Nexenta Systems, and uh, thank you again for your attention.